Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Granulated Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. But before our play begins, may we make a practical suggestion to you on how to economize on your family clothes budget. That is... Buy washable garments whenever you can. Then launder them gently, safely, in White King soap suds. Yes, it is very easy and inexpensive to keep your washables new looking in gentle White King soap suds. Those suds are safe for all your brightly colored washables. Safe for gay new cottons, pretty rayons, and sheer fine nylons. White King suds safeguard your clothes in still another way. They wash out all the dirt. In fact, the only thing White King suds could possibly be hard on is dirt. They wash off surface soil, wash out hidden dirt. To safeguard all your washables, we know you'll say, as thousands of ladies do, I love White King. In Cairo, at the home of Princess Naji, the servants bring in a hideous, evil-looking dwarf known as Arenye the Spider, who has been caught peering in at a window. Infuriated at a remark made by Betty, Arenye shakes from the sleeve of his burnous a poisonous little snake hidden in a flower. Summoning all his occult powers, Chandler renders it harmless, and Arenye, terrified, breaks away and jumps out through the window. But later, with the Arab Batouche, Chandler goes to the house of Ben Ali in the Street of the Thieves, where Chandler believes Robert Regent to be hidden. Posing as a wandering Egyptian holy man who can neither hear nor speak, Chandler listens while Arenye boasts to Batouche that he has cast upon Betty a spell, the curse of the white flower. Meanwhile, at Naji's home, Dorothy and Betty are awaiting the return of Chandler and Bob from the Street of the Thieves. Chandu, the magician. You know, Mother, I felt kind of sorry for that little man after all. Even if he is so repulsive. Yes, I can understand how I could feel that everyone's making fun of him. He's like a, a fantastic puppet in an Arabian costume. He made me think of that story. You know the one I mean. I know it's time you went up to bed. You're half asleep. Where did that flower come from? Hmm? Oh, that snake was in it, don't you remember? Oh, well, how can you bear to touch it? It smells so sweet. There was a girl who lived on an island in the Bosphorus. And a dwarf like I was in love with her. Darling, never mind the bedtime story. Just go to bed. I can't help thinking about it somehow. She laughed at the dwarf, and he was furious. So one day, he sent her a beautiful basket of fruit, pomegranates, and exotic things like that. And... Betty, <laughs> where did you hear that story? I guess I read it somewhere. And at the bottom of the basket, there was a little snake, and it bit her, and she died. Oh, now that's enough. Come on, sleepyhead, you're sound asleep in your chair. <laughs> it is very funny, Patouche. Mashallah. Why dost thou laugh? You bring a holy man to bless the house of Ben Ali, and only I am here. <laughs> I am in here, the spider. Uh, it is well for thee this holy man cannot hear thy words, infidel. Oui, it is well, as you say. He might run to Chandu the magician and tell him what I have done. Uh, but thou hast not told me what it is, this uh, 
curse of the white flower. Ah, uh, you are fascinated by it, huh? It is always so. What is it? What is it? Speak. This holy man cannot waste his time with an infidel. It is a curse most useful. Mademoiselle Regent will not be the first to die of it. I learned it from a Nubian who learned it in the jungle. By Allah, thou art a savage. We oui, a savage. Wow, oui. we. Uh, <laughs> One must only place the flower in the hand of the one he wishes to die. And when the word is spoken... <laughs> I do not believe it. Ah, Chandu, a magician will believe it. If you do not, Mademoiselle will also and slowly die. And no one will know the reason. It is not possible thou hast done this thing to place a flower in the hand. Of the young girl. Ah, yes, it was my cunning that I did not. Uh, the flower was on the floor at her feet. You think she would not bend to pick it up, the so beautiful flower? Uh, I know she did. Be silent, infidel. I will give the holy man the sign. He will lay his hands upon thee, and thou shalt understand his power. Uh, I am ready. Uh, no, no, do not lift me. Set me upon my feet. Open the door, Batouche. Uh, what do you say, holy man? He said you could not speak. Yeah, don't do. It is you. Yeah. Oh, good. The street almost empty. We'll go across the street to your shop, Batouche. It is well to walk fast for these few steps. Even in this street, questions can be asked. You miserable little weasel. Hold still. Uh, a moment, Chandu. I left Bob here at the door. I wonder where he is. Perhaps in the room at the back with my son. Uh, I curse you, Chandu, and all of your family until the end of time. Hold still or I'll choke the breath out of you. <laughs> Bob, come on, we're going. I will not go to the house of the princess. Chandu, the young Effendi is not here. He has gone. And my son, who was to watch the shop also. Well, where could they go? <laughs> they have gone to seek Monsieur Regent, but they will not find him now. How do you know where they went? Uh, if they were in this doorway, they could have seen him. Hold this fellow a minute, Petouche. I, uh, I'm going to have a look around. Uh, I will hold him, but in these narrow streets. Uh, look, Petouche, is that your son uh, there at the back? I see nothing. Uh, oh, that's... Now oh, come in, infidel! Chandu! Chandu, did you see him? Yes, he slid past me like a snake. Ah, I should have held him. I'll get him, Batouche, if I need him. I'm going back to Nudges at once. Chandu, you do not believe the curse he pronounced. I do indeed. I've heard it many times. I can't wait for Bob. When he comes, bring him along. I will. Oh, just a minute, Frank. Come in. Where's Betty? In her room, asleep. Come on. But what's the matter? And where's Bob? He'll be along pretty soon. Did Betty pick up the flower that was on the floor after I left? Why, yes. Frank, what's the matter? Wait a minute. Let's see if she's all right. All right? Betty? Now, turn on the light. See? I told you she would... What? What's happened to her? Betty? Betty? Well, there's that flower on the pillow. Well, what's that got to do with it? Betty, wake up. Your hands are like ice. Open your eyes, darling. It's no use, Dot. You can't wake her. What's the matter with her? It's a spell straight out of the African jungle. They call it the curse of the white flower. Oh, I don't believe it. But how did you know? Arania said so, and I've heard of it for years. In India, Africa, Hawaii, there's no question about it. Well, how long does it take to wear off? Never. As long as the one who invoked the curse is alive. She can't lie there unconscious for years. It's more than that, Dot. You see, as the flower dies, the victim... Dies. Betty is not going to die just because of some jungle curse. If I could got here before she fell asleep, I might have stopped it then. Oh, do something now. I will. But you must realize, Dot, we're dealing with a savage, primitive thing. Well, then use savage methods. Just bring that dwarf here. I'll do the rest myself if I have to. Dorothy, wait. Well, someone must know where he is. I tell you, I won't have this. It doesn't matter where he is, Dot. I can get him here. Well, do it then. Do it. Dot, sit down. I can't do a thing while you're so afraid. You know that. Well, how can I help it? Look at her. As white and still as it should... Dot! Oh, I know. I'll try, Frank. Aurigny, in the name of the secret word taught you by the black forces of the jungle, 
I command you to stop wherever you are and listen to my voice. Stop, Arrigny. Listen. Come to this house. You cannot disobey. Come from your hiding place, wherever it is. Arrigny, I have spoken. It didn't work, did it? Why do you say that? Well, that day in the desert when you caught the man that stole the emerald, we saw him in the sand. We don't have to see Arrigny. As long as he hears me. And I know he did. Well, how can you possibly tell? Listen. Just the door downstairs. Listen, Dot. Uncle Frank, where are you? Oh. Up here, Bob. In Betty's room. Hey, Mr. Shunk! Oh, steal your little squirter. I'll knock you in. He's got her in here. You see him? I sure have. But you said you wanted it. Oh, Bob, hurry! I found him right outside the front door. I bet I'm black and blue all over where he kicked me. Is Betty okay? He said he put a curse on her. Ah, the curse of the white flower is more powerful than the magic of Chandu or any man. Can I set me on my feet? Oh, what a chance. We ought to be chained up with that thing we saw in the caves in Malta. Yeah, the court Miss Turban will do. No, no. That's it. No, the court is sacred. My pilgrimage to Mecca. You're no Mohammedan. I heard what you said to Batouche. You hold his arm, Mr. Bob. He won't get away this time. I'm okay. Gosh, Uncle Frank, I didn't mean to whip off down there, but we saw a couple of Egyptians stop outside Ben Ali's house, and Egyptians. we thought... Egyptians? It... <laughs> One of them was Monsieur Fijian. How do you know it was my father, Arrigny? Ben Ali had taken him to walk. Ah, uh, cushion, I will tell you nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we'll see. Do you suppose it really was, Dad? Yes, I do, Bob, oh. but... Gosh, I should have yelled and said who I was. <laughs> Stop that. He won't laugh long. You do not dare to kill me, or Mademoiselle will never open her eyes again. I know better. The spell will be broken if you die. Oh, madame. Are all American ladies so... How do you say... Wake her up, I tell you. Why, Ma? I don't care what you say, Frank. I won't have this. If it's his life or Betty's, it will be his. Listen, Dot. It's the summons. I don't care. You must listen. Don't you realize... The only thing I realize is that Betty's lying there as if she were already dead. You're only making it worse. Love is stronger than hate. <laughs> Dorothy. Now, before we say goodnight... We pause to suggest that you and every member of your family join us every weekday night to hear Chandu, the magician. And we suggest that you try the soap we make, White King Granulated Soap. You will discover that there is no better soap for your washing machine than White King. White King makes plenty of good, rich, foaming soap suds. Long-lasting suds that don't fizzle out on you when your wash water cools down. And White King suds really roll the dirt right out of your clothes. You'll be so proud of your washing. The white things so very white. The colored things kept so fresh and bright. The washing time shortened so considerably, it saves you effort and saves wear on your clothes as well. So, may we remind you... Nothing washes like soap, and there is no soap like White King. You will love White King. And when you buy a box, be sure to save the box top, won't you? Chandu the Magician is presented for your enjoyment every weekday evening. Dorothy Regent is played by Irene Tedrow. Arenye is played by Arolf Sedan. Your announcer is Howard Culver. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu, the magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.